In 1904, St. Louis hosted an Olympic marathon for the ages. Overshadowed by the neighboring World's Fair, the poorly planned event was reduced to a lackluster sideshow primed for disaster. During a sweltering 90-degree day, the runners were thrust onto a hellish route that cut through car traffic, rocks, thick dust, and 300-foot hills. Of the 32 athletes who competed, only 14 finished. And of the 14, these are the three worth knowing about. Fred Lors was a fresh-faced athlete, ready to make a name for himself. For nine miles, Lors was near the front of the pack until uh -oh. painful muscle cramps stopped him in his tracks. Yikes. And he wasn't the only one. Almost every single racer had severe muscle cramps that day thanks to this dummy, <coughs> chief event organizer and amateur scientist James Sullivan. You see, Sullivan turned the event into an experiment to grasp how purposeful dehydration affects athletes. Immune to common sense, Sullivan put a single water station at the 11th mile mark. So for 26 miles, the runners relied on one water station that was dirty and gave you dysentery. James Sullivan, what a guy. Oops. Anyway, back to Lors. With the sun beating down, road dust clogging his lungs, and his muscles spazzing in protest, Lors had enough and traded in his two legs for four wheels. He hitched a car ride to the 19th mile mark, got out, and gingerly ran through the finish line. The crowd went wild, but before the gold medal could be placed around his neck, his ruse was discovered. Next up, Andrin Carbajal. He was a five foot tall Cuban national and former mailman turned athlete. To get to St. Louis, Carbajal had to raise money by competing in running events, including a 700 mile race across Cuba. Once he got to St. Louis, he was easy to spot. Among the sleeveless shirts and thigh high shorts, Carbajal wore a billowing long sleeve shirt, cut off slacks and work boots. He didn't dress like a sports champion, but damn did he run like one. With each and every step, Carbajal charged towards the finish line. Even though his legs never gave out, his grumbling stomach did. To satisfy his hunger, he ate some apples from a nearby orchard that turned out to be rotten. Uh -oh. So he took a little recovery nap and then proceeded to finish in fourth place. And then, there's Thomas Hicks. The gold winner, the top dog, the champion, the barely standing living cadaver. You see, Hicks was so physically ill that he couldn't cross the finish line without the help of his trainers. Why? Well, back then, stimulants were legal, and strychnine, a type of rat poison, was thought to have performance-enhancing properties. So during the run, his trainers gave him small doses to gain an edge. But instead of helping him, it was slowly killing him. Once Hicks was dragged across the finish line, he wasn't in a cheery mood. Having lost eight pounds during the race, he was a hollowed out husk of a man. The judges shrugged and gave Hicks the gold, ending the nightmare. As the crowd swooned over Hicks' disheveled body, somewhere in the stands, James Sullivan was probably sipping on a glass of fresh water, feeling proud of putting together the worst marathon ever.